Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Lee. <laughs> and that's it tonight. <laughs> like, <laughs> apologies to Ross's fans. Ross is absent for a second show in a row. Uh, he is okay. He's just busy as the summertime has created busyness. <laughs> so, um, and my dogs have decided to whine in the middle of the show as soon as we started it. Um, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. I keep saying we're going to talk about rally cars. It's been like a running mantra for six shows now. That some, Eventually, a guest is coming, guys, that is going to discuss rally cars. Tonight is not that show. Unless nope. Lee wants to. No, I wouldn't know anything about them, man. I'll be honest with you. So, uh, really fun daily drivers, actually. How you were kind of describing that, that forerunner a little bit ago. Yeah. That's what a rally car is. Again, sucks at towing, just like a forerunner. But fun to drive. <laughs> but a blast. You don't have to worry about potholes. Who cares? Got long travel suspension. <laughs> uh, so as always, we're still socially distanced. We did it way before it was ever mandated because that's the only way we can create a show when Ross is in Connecticut and I'm in Kansas City. And tonight Lee is in the West Coast. Mm, the somewhere in Idaho. Idaho. Okay. <laughs> Idaho Falls, actually. Okay. So is that the... My, that would be the southeast part. Okay. Just my, past the Tetons. My uh, Major League Baseball team has had a minor league team, I think, in the Idaho Falls area for a long time now. I think they're referred to as the Chuckers. The Idaho Damn. Falls Chuckers. Not really sure I'd want to be on that team, but okay. It's, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's a single A affiliate. So, like, hope, you're hoping right. to advance. <laughs> right, right. Do I dare uh, ask who your Major League team is? I'm Kansas City, so it's the Royals. I know. I was being kind of <laughs> facetious. No, 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 no. I'm like, <laughs> I was five when they won the first World Series in, for them. And yeah. then uh, I was 35. No. Yeah, 35 when they won the next one. So, man, it's, and then I didn't even, I wasn't around for the first Chief Super Bowl. Like, took 50 years to get to the second one. So, <laughs> hopefully, the third one's a lot sooner. <laughs> Uh, right. anyway, we, we went down a rabbit hole of sports a couple of weeks ago, actually. It uh, happens. one of the guests wanted to rib me the whole time because we, it was right before the Super Bowl, and I was way too overconfident. I didn't realize our offensive line was completely depleted. Anyway, uh, we're going to kind of skip news tonight. Uh, I have a personal update that I put the crossbars on top of the Suburban. It right doesn't, on. it's not, it's not really that giant of an update but we we are playing so much little league so like we had a, a a two week section where it literally rained like every day for two weeks straight so little league was just getting rained out constantly and now we're in the midst of all of the makeup games so we literally have a little league game with three boys playing if not every night every other night so tonight's one of the free nights <laughs> and you wanted to spend it with me of course i need i need a show you poor gotta, guy. Hey, you got you poor guy. Scraping hey, the bottom of the barrel. The only way to get ahead in this business is consistency. That's <laughs> and then or, guests. or money or money. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not paying for that. I got, I got kids to feed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the other jobs that I do is I test products for uh, the drive website. And I was very fortunate Uh I grabbed a, a, a set of Stanley hex keys. Uh, that was my, my product that I had to test. And I was like, man, I just bought a GM Suburban, which everything is literally a Torx head on. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what I'm going to use these hex keys for. <laughs> uh, I've been racking my brain for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I, and I got the crossbars. Uh, I ordered them and, and they got here and I looked at it. And I was like, oh crap, it's more Torx stuff. Like, what am I going to... And then I started Wait. actually reading the instructions and there were eight tiny Allen or hex head bolts on it. So I used the Stanley tool to be able to put the crossbars together to then use the tool that it came with to get the Torx bolt on. But even though I torqued it, it's already, but see, so. there's a purpose. Dude, it was a super handy tool. Like I have the, the Swiss army knife of Allen wrenches mm -hmm. where like you fold all of them out and like yep. you're stuck twisted, but then like you get stuck with that big section at the end. Uh, and this is like, I, I should be, normally I produce and share images <laughs> while Ross is talking. <laughs> <laughs> he's Ross's really fault. helpful to the show. <laughs> it's Ross's fault. He's not right. Here. But they actually, uh, I had the older hex, 
uh, tool set that like you could, I think they were cobalt that you could snap open and the plastic like fell open and then everything was there that you could pop out. Right. And, and the Stanley is, is similar. It, it folds open, but like everything is mounted through the middle. So whether it's open or closed, everything's always secure. Always together. Always together. Yeah. And so uh, it was super handy. I, I liked it quite a bit and they are longer than the normal ones. So like if you're in a tight spot, I could see how maybe there would be a disadvantage there, but the yeah. longer ones were nice for trying to do between the roof and the crossbar to tighten those back up. Cause that once I got them up there, I realized like I had to loosen all of the, the hex bolts to then like settle the crossbar the way I wanted it after I got the Torx ones in on the side. The, nice. the modern Suburbans don't have sliding crossbars. Really? There I are no idea. four points up there. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. Four, four position for the crossbars up there. So you can do one at the very front and one at the very back <laughs> and have like six feet of space between your crossbars, which is a little extreme. Uh, I went with the second position for the front one and... I think it was the third position for the back one. So it's kind of, I have a Yakima skybox that I'm going to throw up there. Um, and so. Is that where you're going to put one of the kids when they get unruly? Oh, man, I wish. <laughs> God, if only, that if was, only somebody wouldn't call on you. <laughs> exactly. That, that was the whole point of, the, of getting the Suburban was to make that third row be that much farther away. <laughs> Stop touching me. He's he's breathing oh, on me. <laughs> I yes. know. And the, and the, the two that we have in the third row are 10 and six. And so, yeah, they, yeah. Stop breathing. You're driving me crazy. Leave yeah. me alone. Don't touch me. The the yeah. best part is, and I think I've told this story on here before is the, the six-year-old needed to, I think it was like an early morning, it was baseball practice or something. And my wife was like, fine, I'll take him. And so she drives a Sequoia and he was like, what car are we taking? She's like, we're driving mine. And he was like, I'm not going then. Because the, the Suburban has the 4G LTE Wi-Fi uh, in it that oh, he could still it. do games and the Sequoia didn't. So he's like, I'm out. I'm not doing that. Like, She made him get the car. They went anyway. I was going to say, I bet mom overruled that decision. <laughs> yes, she did. She she knew exactly how to do. So Suburban has crossbars on it now. I need to get it. Uh, I need to get the Yakima out and test to make sure I like how everything is situated up there. It's been so hot lately that getting a giant black thing out of the garage to then go stand in the sun with was not, not on my list of things to do. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. It's like second, uh, my, uh, we, we had a guy from rally ready driving school down in Austin, Texas and named Texas Dave. Uh, and he refers to summer as second winter. Cause it's so hot. They still stay indoors. <laughs> God, you led me right into that one. Yep. Uh, it got the uh, chortle it deserved. So you're yep, good. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, if you haven't met Texas Dave, he's he's an interesting character. He'd be he'd be good for you. So let's get to you. Let's talk about you. Cause oh man. <laughs> no, I'm boring. <laughs> well, that's the problem with, with two people that host their own things on the yeah. same show. We both feel like we talked about ourselves too much already. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> So how about I how about I interview you? <laughs> yeah, but they already know all my stuff. I, like, I, I know, I know. Yeah, but I can ask questions that most people probably won't. We just need to do a second thing and then we'll do it for your show. Or there you go. Yeah. All right. We'll make sure there Ross comes for that one because he's way more interesting than I am anyway. <laughs> oh, that loser. He's been he's missed too, so he's out. Exactly. <laughs> I, I literally I sent him the note. I was like, hey man, no offense. We just got to get the show in. I'm not trying to edge you out. <laughs> hey Ross. You're on the edge. <laughs> Almost. Oh. There's one leg left and it's about to get kicked out from underneath you. Yeah. <laughs> one, he was super sick once. And then now these two, he's just been too uh, busy. It's so okay. it's, that's it's three strikes. It's all good. <laughs> so where do you want to start? You want to start with what you drive, what you're pulling, or how you, you ask, have a great you microphone? Ask, you ask, I'll answer, brother. <laughs> you just, you ask and I'll answer. So let's start with the... Uh, your amazing sound quality first because you sit right. there with a nice microphone because clearly you do this more than just once yeah so uh yeah i mean <laughs> I, i've invested a lot of in, into equipment i think in the last uh year i've probably put in about 15 grand into equipment so yeah you know i i started out with some other microphones and they did okay i'll be honest with you this is a an audio technica 
or Technic or something. Yeah, something like that. You know, it's like <laughs> sixty nine bucks, but it sounds right. it sounds really good. And uh, you know, nothing really expensive. I I spent most of my money on cameras and things like that, but um these mics seem to work well they're usb and or uh xlr powered so Sweet. you know i i can you know go either way I'm trying to remember if mine was <laughs> <laughs> i also have both outputs <laughs> yeah there you go there you go <laughs> so overland radio how yep. long have you guys been doing that now so we started that last year uh late january early february somewhere around there so right before everything just shut down yeah it was kind of <laughs> one of those things you know and i leased some servers and i kind of went at it in a from a different approach i think than than some folks do when it when it comes to this i you know i just this is an embarrassing story to tell but i'm going to tell it anyway <laughs> it's the best kind i have i have multiple little businesses and i do various things i'm i'm retired so this is my fun stuff but my ideas come to me while i'm in the shower okay and and so i'm you know i'm standing in the shower and i'm thinking about overlanding i'm thinking about off-roading and and camping and family and things like that and it occurs to me that there's all this stuff that revolves around overlanding and off-roading but there's no media per se that is you know constantly broadcasting over the net um and simulcasting in video and so i think hey i'm gonna start an overland radio so i i keep i used to keep and at the time i did my kids washable crayons in the in the shower and so i write <laughs> notes on the wall yeah yeah because if you're like me you think of the idea but by the time you get out and dry off and get dressed you're like yeah. what oh, the crap, hell was, what was I, that what was it i was thinking about because i don't i now i can't remember i don't know if y'all can hear that but I happen to be in an RV park just so I could have Wi Fi. Barely. And 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 there's a couple ankle biters out here trying to see who's got the biggest <laughs> set of nuts. Anyway, um, so you know, I, I decided to start it. And so I don't know anything about this platform. I really don't. But I got the drive, I got the the financial part of it. So I go out and I find somebody, and he happens to be Michael with from all over overland, and I'm like, dude. I've created this radio thing i'm broadcasting music you know what do you think and at first he kind of like eh, you know he's doing his podcast <laughs> well, then all of a sudden he calls me up and he goes dude i've been i just been thinking about this thing and it's just it keeps coming to me so you know the here we go and now we have 230 opus overland addict we have you know various sponsors and um and, and it's you know it's taken off and now we're building the website to where it has more content. So we have blog writers who are writing for us on the website. We have other folks who have their own shows, you know, hint, hint. Um, and so there's, you know, there's, all, <laughs> there's always, you know, there's always, so we're always, you know, expanding and growing it. So, you know, honestly, it's great. You can go to live 365, download the app, search for Overland radio, and you can listen to us on, on uh, any of the you know android or ios uh, devices and um, hopefully by next year we're going to have an independent app and we will be simulcasting live video feeds from various locations around the country while we're doing it so i'm a, I'm, I'm screen sharing now for you oh yeah it's there actually, we go it's actually uh so when we when we post to youtube now i don't have to go back and edit in what we've been talking about i can't right just, on. <laughs> I can just there do you it. go so yeah, so, there's the website. So yeah, we we have uh have have some have some shady looking characters. There's Michael and <laughs> and all. He's he's pretty shady guy. Nah, he's a great guy. And then uh, you know you can see some of our stuff. Stuff. Just shows, stuff. Yeah. Uh, it has a you know we have a player on there. So if you click the player, it'll allow you to stream the music while you're doing it. Uh, you can look at you know past shows. You know you know the drill. Yep. So there's one know. literally just called Off Road Podcast. How'd I miss? How'd I miss that name? Yeah, they've been around for a while, man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel silly. We 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 had a we uh how do we name ourselves? We use the commenters of Hooniverse.com. Yeah, which is an automotive website. And we were like, hey, right. man, Ross and I have been trying to come up with a name for got a year. Wow. And we were like, we got to name it before we can do it. Sure. 
And the guy came up with off the road again. And I was like, you know what? I, I like a Willie Nelson reference. I'm okay with that. There you go. Do it. <laughs> hey, what did we say earlier? There's room. There's room. There's room for everybody. Yeah. Uh, okay. So how often do you guys all get together to do a show? Cause, or is that just more like the big expos where you guys are finally in the same location? So uh, each, so the off road podcast guys do a show on Monday nights. Michael all over Overland does a show on Tuesday nights. Okay. Wednesdays and Thursdays are open right now. I occasionally do a show on Thursday, but I've traveled so much. I mean, I've only been home three weeks, three and a half weeks since March. Okay. And, uh, and then on Friday, uh, the gen five runner show, uh, airs on, on Fridays. And so, you know, we, we, those are the set shows and those are done very similar to what you and I are doing right now, but we <laughs> use, we use StreamYard or okay. restream or something like that. And, um, and you know, so everybody has access, uh, and when they're simulcasting it or when it's broadcasting on the radio platform, it's also live on Facebook and, uh, YouTube at the same time. So we have it set up. So where it's, Basically, if you're riding down the road, you can listen to it on your app or if you're at home or wherever, you can watch it on the uh, social media and uh, comment and, and that kind of stuff. That's great. Sim simulcasting is, is kind of a game changer for you. I think uh, our internet connection just went to the hoops. Are we there? You're still there. I'm, I'm still here. Uh -oh. Can you One not hear me? Went. Are you there? Yeah good old technology I've, I've been able to hear you the entire time well can you not hear me anymore i don't know if it's yeah it's even it's even better when you have the co-host who can continue talking so only the video people realize that oh, somebody yeah. falls away and then rejoins the video. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome right yeah that's true dude ross is really handy when he's here <laughs> Okay, so I think you dropped out talking. Uh, you just finished talking about like a, the lineup of stuff. Um, so yeah, so we just, we have those shows Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Okay. Um, right now, Wednesday and Thursday are open, and uh, we have some folks that we we're talking to 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 fill some of those spots. And then randomly, we will just go live on the radio, and we'll just we'll just go live and we'll broadcast it and put out a post or something like that. So you know, it's fun. We do whiskey shots. So there are mandatory whiskey shots and, uh, Good deal. Here's my, my <laughs> flask that so you have to, yeah. So we do those and we usually let the listeners, uh, uh, call us, or, you know, or put us out, bring the kid on, man, put the kid on. <laughs> uh, it was actually my wife running away oh, with the dog. <laughs> put, put her on too. That's what I do whenever somebody walks in, I'm like, get right? in here. <laughs> The best was one night, one of my, uh, one of the kids ran up and they're like, Oh, sweet Batman pajamas. And they were all like, it's Fortnite." Uh oh okay i didn't know that was that big a deal <laughs> that was yeah <laughs> oops that, that matters i guess yeah it does so sweet uh now the way i got to you was from opus opus yep. directed us to you right um <laughs> it is <Suckers>. the piece <laughs> of overlanding equipment that i am the most curious about really Yes. Well, I can tell you anything you want to know about it. Cause I mean, literally it's the only thing that I can find available that will sleep six and not require 20 feet of trailer or $50,000 or I, to be honest, I, I haven't actually priced it out. <laughs> well, we sleep seven in ours. We have the Do Opus four. Yeah. We have the OP four model. Um, we sleep seven in ours frequently and i will say that there are more kids than adults right um and but for the money i think you'll be hard pressed to find a trailer that is used for off-roading and overlanding um that will go up against i mean literally that'll go up against the opus and um and not cost you a fortune i mean each one spec, you can spec it a little different. And I'm going to tell you this, you can get into an Opus somewhere between that, you know, 29 to 35, give or take. And you got eight and a half, almost nine foot ceilings in here. 
you got a dinette, a U-shaped dinette. You got a queen bed on one end. This this particular one I'm in right now sitting is the marketing model for Opus that I've been carrying around for a while. Okay. And um, it's got a, the big movie projector screen in it, and um, it's got the trailer movers, um, you know, on the wheels and and one thing. You know, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's loaded up. The only thing it doesn't have is air conditioning. It doesn't have AC? That. No, mine has AC, and I ordered mine with AC because God did not bless me with one of those kind of bodies that, I mean, you know, there's parts of my body that start rubbing together, and I feel like a racehorse, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. <laughs> Ch- chafing is real. <laughs> yeah, so it's, the sweat is bad. So, yeah, and so anyway, this one doesn't have it. Thankfully, though, I've been staying in a higher elevation, so it's not, okay. you know. I think that I'm going to share the image that I, I found online. And I was like, I need to research everything about this thing. So let's see what you got. And we'll see if I can't tell you all about it. <laughs> oh, the it's, voice from Australia. Exactly. That <laughs> is probably, yeah, that is probably one of the most famous Opus images you'll, you'll find. And if you watch this video, if this doesn't sell you on the Opus, I'm not sure what does. I, I was um, I was sold on the image. I didn't even need the video. I don't oh, I don't need to see him achieve getting out of this because you already can tell he's getting out of it. Oh, if, have you not watched this video? I have. I have. Okay, I was gonna say because because it does it doesn't end there. <laughs> no, no, it's he's, better. <laughs> it gets better in some ways. It's there for a so, while. I, I put the Opus through quite a few paces, and I'd, I'd like to say that, honestly, anywhere I've been able to put my truck, the Opus is gone, and, and that's a fair statement, including I've I've I floated the Opus once crossing a river, um, so it floated, it kind of got sideways and started to float a little bit, but the truck kept going. Um, I've buried it over the wheel wells and fenders in mud and had to get pulled the truck and trailer both out because well it was just red clay and it was thick exactly i've run it over i've run it over rocks i've i mean there's just honestly if you can get your if you can get the vehicle through or down it the trailer is going to go well and it's just amazing fully loaded they're 3500 pounds 39 is about is is gross for the for the four so it it, it comes in at you know 29 empty and 30 and some change 39 and and some change you know loaded but you got to remember um this thing isn't built kind of it's not flimsy i mean this is a steel frame a big heavy galvanized chassis a hot dip galvanized chassis to keep it from you know rusting um it's got uh, i mean there's everything in it <laughs> I, tell, I mean you know there's 40 gal 40 plus gallons of water underneath this thing you got two jerry can holders on the front you got a propane on the front you got a spare tire in the back you got a rack that folds over that'll hold you know roughly 600 pounds of of, of gear Extra stuff gear. yeah uh that was at the top of yankee boy basin okay and w- when i got to the top i know you can't see it now but there was cars everywhere and there was nowhere to park (laughs) and so i've somehow or another finagled it back by the time i took this picture most of the cars had left but when i got to the top there were two more opuses in tow behind me and i got up there and this guy goes uh what in the hell are you doing up here with a trailer (laughs) and i was like i I don't know we're on an adventure this was our adventure run so we went to the top of that and turned around and went back down and I think everybody we passed gave us this look of, um, you're not supposed to be here, but <laughs> we came and we conquered. <laughs> so that was a blast too. It looked, it just, it, it, they look so, I don't, I don't say easy, but like just capable there. I think that, you know, I, I think that a lot of trailers that are built today for the purpose of off-roading and overlanding are capable. I'm not going to say that it's any more or less capable than others, but there are certain things about this trailer that make it so unique that it's not so much the capability as much as it is the durability and the safety that come into mind. And I'll give you an example. And I'm not, I I don't want anybody listening to think I'm bad mouthing because I'm not bad mouthing. And, and if you take it like I'm bad mouthing, well, I don't care. But <laughs> there are uh, there are other trailers out there 
that have similar suspensions to this, which is the independent trailing A arms with the spring and the shocks, and that they do a great job. The difference is, is the high center of gravity of these trailers. They have rooftop tents on them. They're a little more narrow than the Opus, so they, they are taller. Right. And thus, you see many of these things laying on their sides. Exactly. Um, I can high speed this trailer behind my truck. And when I say high speed, I don't mean like, you know, 70 miles an hour, but I mean, your typical road that you're going, you know, 20 miles an hour on, I mean, I can get 30 or 35 if it's safe, this trailer won't leave the ground. It just won't. It's and and you don't have to worry about rolling this trailer like you would some of those others, nothing against them. They serve their purpose. They're good brands, but we bought this trailer because I couldn't see paying forty five or fifty thousand dollars for a trailer and still having to put a three thousand dollar rooftop tent on. Right. That's it's just that simple. That like so with, with four kids, I have looked at so many op- like we we sleep in a marmot uh eight man tent. Like that's mm-hmm. that's we're we're still ground campers basically. <laughs> uh and everything I look at is so expensive. And I feel like I have to compromise something like I, I, right. I got to buy the trailer and then I got to go buy a rooftop tent. This was the only one it looked like I could get everybody in it and not exceed some towing capacity. Uh, yeah. And I mean, just the sheer fact that you can carry so much. I mean, I, <laughs> I've been on the road. I'm, I'm going into my what second month with this trailer. And I mean, I'll admit, I mean, I'm overpacked. And, and I'm still, I still have some, I still have residual, uh, stuff left for my wife and kids with me or daughter with me. But, you know, the, the simple fact is if it's, you know, a family of four or five, this is comfortable, a family of seven, you know, you might want the annex so that you have a little extra living space. You're, you're looking at the air awning right there. That's the awning and, um, you know, they're great. And the, the annex and the air awning just seems so well thought out like it makes so much sense just to they they they're powered by the same stuff like it's just it's all air it's all air it's lightweight uh it's you know i always tell people it's i'll back up so i came here to this little rv park because i wanted to be able to you know do the show with you and i needed to get caught up on some work and stuff and so i rarely get into an rv park but pulling into this rv park i knew going into it that I was going to have visitors. <laughs> Somebody's going to come by and say like, what is that? I had a, I literally had a group of people stand by and watch me open this thing up and inflate it and, and set it up. And they were all just completely mesmerized by it. And since then, I think I've given six tours and I got here yesterday afternoon <laughs> and uh, you know, I carry brochure books with me and I've given all those out. I mean, everywhere I go with this thing, people are just like, I the 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 two things either I've never seen one but that is the coolest thing I think I have seen or I've seen that on the internet and I'm so glad I got to see one in person you know but <laughs> this it's just amazing the capability and you're right the the air awnings and the annex now I will say this in full disclosure I don't work for Opus I just contract and do consulting work for them so they know that I'm pretty opinionated and I'll give you my opinions about certain things I like and dislike on the Opus as I have with them the air awning is one of the most amazing accessories that you could put on that and that's what you just showed in that right. that photo or the open right the annex is also a great accessory, but it's not a great accessory if you're by yourself and it's not a great accessory if you're going to move your camper every day. Okay. There's a lot of, there's a lot of components to it. So if you're going to base camp, the annex is great. I mean, it really is. And in the wintertime, it's, it's fantastic. If you're going to set up and take down every day, it's just a bitch. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you're by yourself now if you have another person that's you know can can help you then then it's not is it worth buying yeah yeah i'd say it's worth buying even if you don't use it all the time you use it on those base camp events or if it's cold it's worth buying um but if it's summertime i leave that jerk that's it and it's- i'm telling you it is what what you don't see is right there where the well, no, they do have it rolled up. See in that area right there above the, the orange 
the in the background there you can see that whole inside area rolls up yeah and so now it opens up into basically one gigantic room both the camper and the annex together it's it you know it's fantastic base camping get that sucker yeah so like leave it parked yeah go go run the errands or to whatever trailhead you want to run to come back yeah camp here yeah it's perfect for that if you want to take down and 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 you know move every day then just get the air on him so okay so because this is my this is always my um conundrum is so the the guys that i go with around here like one's got an, a rooftop tent on a trailer uh, an adventure trailer from uh oh god where's ron's trailer from uh to extreme right um and the and then he's got a rooftop tent on top of that and the other one has just a rooftop tent on top of his land cruiser i will start taking my eight man limestone tent limestone yeah eight man marmot limestone tent apart first right and, and i will still be putting my tent away when they have finished right they'll all start after me <laughs> and they'll be done standing there waiting looking at me right god damn it guys so <sighs> air annex means i'm still gonna be that guy <laughs> you're the air annex you might actually still be in the game there okay <laughs> yeah without the annex uh you're toast <laughs> i mean yeah. if, if you're talking the awning and just the 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 main camper itself you know take down time you know it's relative to how much crap you got to pack to be right. honest with you but if you're doing a weekend trip and it's pretty minimal man and you know just a matter of minutes this thing's down and just packed. like re resettling what we slept in type of stuff yeah i mean you move some cushions around and strap the make sure the beds are strapped in and you know deflate it and start folding it there's a it's kind of like a uh what are they uh you know like a puzzle um okay uh you chinese gotta, puzzle box or that's whatever. yeah 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 that's what i was trying to think of yeah and so yeah, once you, japanese but yeah once you learn it and know how to pack it away dang it go man it's just it's simple i mean i popped this one up and they say two minutes 90 seconds to two minutes it's with the awning and all that stuff it's about three three and a half minutes but you can pop a beer if you want and drink a beer but still three three and a half minutes like that's great. Yeah. Like, and you, and you get to stand there and watch it for the most part. You know, yeah. I mean, there's, there's times that you might stick your head in there and push up on an air beam. Cause it's, you know, kinked over the way you packed it or something, but you know, how, still. how often, so like, say, so you've been at the RV park for two days. Like you said, you got there yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Is there ever a point in time where you have to like reinflate something? Not usually there are some uh there's there's a one-way valve where the pump hooks to it's basically a paddleboard pump it has six and a half pounds of pressure that's it okay. that's it it's hard as a rock right yeah hard as a rock but there's only six and a half pounds of pressure in it so it's exactly like a paddleboard um but to answer your question no okay. very or should i say rarely there are a few one-way valves where the pump hooks up that don't always seal quite well and okay. so after a couple of days you may hit the pump and it tighten it back up but as a general rule if you you know do the five valves on the back and the one on the awning shouldn't have any problem but still like multiple days before you'd have to like re readjust it like that's still yeah <laughs> yeah and and the thing is and one thing oops sorry one thing that uh a lot of times we forget is that if you set up in the morning time when the air temperature is cooler the air molecules are a little tighter so it's more dense so when you inflate it as the day goes on and the air mo molecules heat sometimes you will see that that density change and and they won't they won't sag or anything but you can grab them and they're a little softer right but then you go back to nighttime and they're hard as a rock again so you know I think, I think I've inflated this one. I had it up for seven days and I think I hit the button and it ran for maybe 30, 45 seconds right. once. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just have, have you had it in any heavier weather? Like not oh, just man. like, I wish I had sent you this video prior <laughs> to this, uh, Rangely or Wrangley, Colorado. Okay. Um, stayed at this little city park for anybody that ever goes through this is the greatest little city owned park rv park it's all shaded electric 
some of the nicest hot showers it's 20 bucks a night paved <laughs> paved parking too so i'm there with my daughter and we see this storm brewing off in the west i'm like oh dear god we're under the, all these trees and here comes and i mean the wind came so anyway it was recorded some 50 mile an hour uh gusts okay and um the awning on one side over here um due to a a real heavy wind shear you could see the tree limbs come down and yeah this area acts like a parachute and that one corner over there collapsed and as soon as the wind let up it was went right back up okay but other other than that the whole thing was fine i mean we know i've never this is the marketing trailer i've had for a couple months now and my trailer's two and a half years old i've never had a leak in either one of them okay it's just i uh, i live in kansas and it's windy here like, I live in I live in Tulsa. It's windy there. That's true. It turns <laughs> out your wind becomes my wind. Like yeah, it's usually. <laughs> yeah, my tornadoes become your tornadoes. Oh. Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah. The, it's always you know if if we're in the wind, uh, I've never had. And I admit, I think when I first got it, I was like, "What do I do if it storms?" And I made it through two storms down at Birds Adventure Center in, in the Ozarks, okay. and it was it was I was like, "Okay, I'm sold. No problem." I got this. <laughs> See, because they have their uh, their hard sided version too. Yeah, the OP fifteen. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's the hard side with the pop top. And uh, I, I'll be honest, I ha I don't have a lot of experience in that. I I know enough to probably be dangerous. I could tell you a lot about it, but as far as first hand experience, well, I I don't have a lot of first hand experience. It's it's definitely a li more limited sleeping capacity. I know that much. So yeah uh but there's benefits to that too so <laughs> you know you do have an indoor shower to bathroom uh you do have holding tanks for all the the, the stuff and um you know uh, but you still cook outside which i love um, right you don't smell up the camper and you don't you know heat it up or or whatever so i mean it's it's that particular model if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure there's about a nine to 12 month wait to get that thing. Is there really? Yeah. There's almost a nine month wait for these. Man. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have anywhere to go anytime soon, but. Well, you know, being as you're in Kansas city, here's what I think we need to do. Once I get back July in July, um, I got to do a few things to get caught up, but we're going to do a photo shoot in the, Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. I love the, I love the way it looks. I love the pop tops. I love like, it's just Oh yeah. That back pops out and makes a big old King bed back there. Yes. Um, it's, it's a fun trailer. This, this I mean, is the one I, I pointed my parents at. I was like for yeah. two. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And a, it's easy. And, a, and you only need a, a half ton truck. Like you don't need, yeah something with a fifth wheel you know i wish i could indulge some things to you but boy there's some cool things coming that i'm working on with opus i just can't tell you <laughs> otherwise i might be in trouble but but Sorry, that we, ev we eventually stop recording <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah i'm not sure i could do that either but <laughs> okay i understand understand but what i was gonna say is when i get back i got a photo shoot to do with opus and the media company and I think we're going to take this one, my black one, which Chad from Overland Addict is going to pull with his G-Wagon. It looks amazing behind his G-Wagon. So boxy. Everything's boxy. Every, there. Oh, it looks so good, though. My that box God. is he, on boxes. It's great. He, he sent me a picture of that dark green G-Wagon all dressed out, and then he's got my Opus behind it. And I'm like, dude, that looks pretty good. And he's like, yeah, it really does. Chad from but, where, you said? O Overland Addict. He's down in Nixie. He's got a store down there. Um uh, he's like yeah next missouri he's actually gonna that is. <laughs> he's actually gonna be opening up a new opus dealership in tulsa I, is and he? so yeah he's gonna open up a new store and a dealer in tulsa now you have a dealer right in your backyard I do. Advent, adventure motors you I got do. michael <laughs> I, I i helped set michael up as a dealer um oh and, that g-wagon is great hold on let me find a good picture <laughs> did you see the does he he posted i think a couple with the opus behind it but uh, what yeah. I was going to say is maybe uh, we coordinate it and you come down because we're going to have another trailer, uh, a light. And so um, 
we're going to do just, I think, one overnight run through the Ozark so that we can do uh, photo shoots. Maybe you just come along. I'll let you drive. <laughs> I'm good with that. You can drive that, oh, that diesel Colorado and That's... feel all that torque. <laughs> Compared to my 5.3. <laughs> So I don't the, know, but I like 17 miles of a gallon pulling this trailer. That's what I like. Exactly. I found the, the G wagon with the Opus. That's let's see if we let's see which one it is. He's got he's got the RTT from there it is looks man. Like go fast. No, that's a Darchy, I think. Is it Darchy? Okay. Yeah, uh, I think it's a Darchy. Yeah, that's it. That's my baby. As you can see in the front of that one, those little louvers right there in the front little box. That's the air conditioner. Is that that's where that is? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah so um so that's that's your trailer behind that is his my truck. that is my trailer he's had it for the last month or and a half i think and uh funny story behind it his wife uh leanne's just she's just the sweetest lady but she doesn't she doesn't like to camp like he likes to camp you know it's just not his gig she's probably camped more i think since he's had my trailer than she's ever camped before so full disclosure we my my wife is from the east coast she does not want to camp at all she keeps saying yeah i'll go yeah i'll go yeah i'll go there's a reason i'm looking at these things because i i have to i don't have to i get to make i i want to make that experience for her as beneficial as possible because i want her to keep going with me i don't want her to have a bad experience and be like i'm never doing that again well how about this we'll uh we'll get my trailer um when i get back maybe i'll get my trailer you go you go run with us on this run <laughs> and and learn a little bit about it yeah and then i'll let i'll let you take my trailer one weekend and take her sweet as long as she'll as long as she'll go yeah well, she'll she'll go especially especially if she knows it's in a setup like that she's in she's yeah. she's okay with our, our marmot tent but she's just like she she doesn't like bugs she doesn't want to deal with bugs well i'll give you i'll give you my <laughs> generator and i'll let you i'll let you take my generator so you can have air conditioning oh, sweet <laughs> <laughs> so when so with yours like how many if you have the AC unit, you can't really run it that much when you're way out unless you're using the generator. So the AC only works if you're on either shore power or a generator. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you won't run it all solar. There's not really any kind. I mean that, that solution it's there. It's just logistically a nightmare to try to run an air conditioner off solar. The startup okay. is the, the hardest part. After it starts, it's not too bad, but you got to have a lot of panels and you right. got to be pulling a lot of sun and, and batteries. You, you have to be in like high desert, just direct sunlight. Well, not only that, but you need, you know, you need more panels than you could probably carry. Right. Honestly, it's still not efficient enough. Yeah, it's not. So, you know, we just got one of those quiet generators. We, we haul that thing and, and we try not to, if, if we're going to run the generator, we try to find a spot where nobody's around so we don't bother them. Right. If there is somebody around, I, you know, I usually, you know, I'll politely ask if it's, you know, Hey, look, this is what I got. This is, you know, I'll put it behind the tree and the truck over here. I doubt you'll hear it. And a lot of times I've started it up and run it all night. And people have said, I think I heard it, but I wasn't really sure, you know, if that's what, you know, what it was. So. What, what, what generator are you running? Uh, we have one of the champions, it's champions. like a 30, 32 or 3,300. Yeah. Um, love it works great seven or eight hundred bucks something like that is great money yeah so the the last couple of or two shows ago we had on um uh he's a he's an automotive writer vid, uh video personality on the west coast named zach clapman and he had the the ford f-150 hybrid but with the power boost yeah. So all that, all that gen onboard generator stuff at the back of the truck. And he was talking about, so I, I think we got to the topic because we were discussing F-150 lightning. Right. Being able to plug into the house if the house is out. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think it said it could, it could do like, um, the house was, I think up to like 48 hours on the F-150 lightning. Well, if you go with the hybrid at full load, uh, an entire tank of gas lasts like 48 hours. Wow. But if you go with like minimal load, you can go like 80 plus hours on a tank of gas. Holy crap. And how much, how many amps 
Wonder, do you remember how many amps that thing? I don't. I don't numbers? remember the specifics off the top of my head. Oh, uh, I'd be curious because if you know, I mean, there, there's, there's a potential there that you might be able to run an air conditioner, but you know, I don't know. I did see yeah, the thing you, about running your house. Just so. run off the truck, right? Like just. Yeah, yeah. The that's... only problem is you got a truck running, and now you got exhaust fumes right there by the end of your camper. Right. So you could technically unhook and then move the truck so the exhaust is blown away from it. You know, there's there's yeah, ways. There's options. There's options. Oh man, I was trying to find the. Do you say amps or voltage? Amps. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. It says two point four kilowatts, which is not an amp. Ooh, no, but that's that's just a hair shy of what it takes to kick off that generator. You really? Need about you need about three kilowatts. So, which you could. There's some adapter things you could do to you know to, but you need about. I think it's actually, I think it's 2.9 kilowatts is what it takes. 20 amp outlets. Yeah. You need 30 amp. Okay. For the, for the, to run the generator. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's close. Yeah. You know, it's close. It, it says 85 hours on a single Jeez. tank of gas. That's still impressive. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how you spin it. I mean, the air conditioner on the opus aside, I don't care how you spin it. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So like, did you guys have rolling blackouts last winter? No. No. Okay. No, I live in a free. I live in a free state. <laughs> I live in Kansas. That's, I mean, it's sort different. of. It's sort of a free state. <laughs> it's, it's kind of basically the same thing as Oklahoma. Only we. Can... No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Actually, uh, I know that's not true. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no. The, the there's first. A, there's... I went to one wedding in the state of Oklahoma, and the father of the bride referred to my wife as a Yankee the entire time we were there. Where's she from on the East Coast? She's from New York City. Like she's from. Damn, it doesn't get much hard, more hardcore than no, that. She's, she grew up on a, in Manhattan and City Island, so like she is. It's a wonder you're still alive. I mean, she's got to have connections. <laughs> we don't, we don't discuss that. We know. I know people. Yeah, I can hear your wife. I can hear your wife in an argument with you now. That's all right. Damn sorry, it, I know she's, people. She's tapping a foot. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even have to say it. It's implied. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's either the look or there's some kind of fidget going on. You're like, damn, I'm about to die. I say like, it's it's over now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, you'll have to let me know when you guys are going to be back through the area with all those. Plus, I would just want to see a bunch of them together. Also, uh, switch back outdoor safety uh, around town, too. He has one. My boy, well. Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> I love Aaron. Aaron's He's such great. a nice guy. He's a great guy. He he makes me think about so many different things that I don't think about. Oh yeah. That's what he does. And it's amazing. We'll have conversations and he'll say things and I'm like, Oh yeah. Come to think of it. You're right. I want his beard. His I mean, it's fantastic. I, it, it I'm, is going, a fantastic on, I'm going on a couple like two or three months here. And, and I'm like, I see his beard. And I'm like, dude, I, I have beard envy. I have bro beard envy. <laughs> it's, it's He's a great solid. guy. He is great. Yeah uh all right so we normally wrap up the show with what you think would be your number one overland road trip tip <laughs> oh, it, man it, see it's a dangerous question it could be just it's about a anything. dangerous question because and i just spent two and a half weeks with a mountain lion that stalked me for three days or two two and a half days one black bear that decided to want to scratch his back underneath the back of my trailer while I was in anyway, <laughs> I guess he just thought it was like a great back scratcher. And then we had grizzlies all around us, uh, in, in Wyoming. So, you know, be prepared for the environment that you are going to stay in. Uh, especially if you're going to be way off the grid. And yep. in my case, um, you know, I, I went with the ultimate equalizer. <laughs> Everybody's like, do you have bear spray? Nope. Nope. But I got lead poisoning. <laughs> yeah. you, you have more of the uh, Alaska mentality of just, like, just yeah. like large, large caliber firearms as opposed to. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, I, I think as far as tips go, yeah. Stop and think about where you're going and, and that environment and really be prepared for that you know, the, the scenarios I was literally no cell service. Um, it was about a 50 minute drive down a long windy dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Uh, one night there was just, there was nobody, literally nobody was within miles. 
And so be prepared for that kind of stuff. I think the Garmin in reach, the Garmin in reach is one. Of, yeah, it was, um, I'll send you a couple of pictures when we get done here. Okay. Um, the Garmin inReach, you know, is a, is a great security and safety backup device. And so I think that's one of my favorite pieces of gear, actually. That's that's what let us reschedule our show the other day. It was. I sent you that. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Here. I'm on my Garmin. <laughs> so, I mean, I pay for the ultimate or the unlimited deal. And I mean, I don't mind paying for it because it comes in handy. And I mean, I'm sending text messages. It's a lot of times I get work done that way. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, it's, did let us reschedule. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it because it let me figure out how do I respond to him here? Like, I can't just respond to the email. I have to click through links to get into the right thing. <laughs> you should have been able to see my location and everything. Uh, I think it, there was a link if I wanted to go see your location. I just responded yeah. to the email instead. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, go click on that link and then okay. open it up in Google Earth. And take a look at the mountains. Uh, I mean, I literally was at the base of a big, huge mountain range, which isn't really the Tetons, but it's leading up to the Tetons. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and that that's where you had the flat? That was the second freaking tire I've tore up. I mean, and the sad thing is, is that you can't find Goodyear Wrangler tires. Yeah. Hey, what kind of, what we got here? Dinosaurs <laughs> on our, on our shirt? Yep. Just, yeah. still smells like sunscreen <laughs> oh man yeah so i can't find the tires that you know match so i ended up with four matching tires finally and then I, my spare is now a some kind of off brand it's close but it's not right. the same tire so yeah i'm i and it was my own fault it's my own fault i'm just too damn lazy to air down sometime and i should have <laughs> so i can't blame anybody but me what do you what do you normally run uh air pressure wise no or tire, tire. no tire i have the goodyear wrangler dura tracks okay. or, or whatever it's and, and i like them but um yeah <laughs> just for a side note <laughs> the sidewalls <laughs> on them are great as long as you're aired down but if you're aired up they tear real easy <laughs> yeah i've had i've had ko2s on my 94 land cruiser uh the sequoia is running um toyos at3s right now the open country at3s yeah and then the suburban came with 22 inch rims no those that had to go yeah i i i'm not gonna lie like facebook marketplace chevy 18s has been a daily check uh and there's a couple sets for like 300 bucks but then like they've got brand new michelins on them right now and i'm like it's a family bus. Like those are good for like 70,000 miles. Like, <laughs> I can't wear them out fast enough to get exactly. what I want. <laughs> I want to switch. Up. I like, I don't want to verbalize this stuff, but like cutting a tire might help here. Like <laughs> maybe I need to find hey, a gravel road. Be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Because it I can happen at the worst time. Trying to find the wood to knock on. <laughs> it happens at the worst time. And it's, it's always the moment where you're like, I'm tired. I mean, literally the first one I did not so bad. The second one, I was exhausted and it was hot that day and <laughs> it was on a real, the worst. It was on a real dusty road, oh. you know, and anytime somebody came by, I had to like move everything out of the way and like step back so that they could slowly creep by and then, you know, get back. <laughs> Jeez. And then I had this, oh, this cracks me up. I had this lady. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. She's like, where are you from? And I told her, and I was like, this is a beautiful place you guys have here. You know, this little town of Du Bois, uh, Wyoming. And, uh, I'd made it back to town by then. Anyway, I was airing down at this moment. <laughs> I learned, I learned my lesson and she's, and I was like, this is a beautiful place. She goes, yeah, well, don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, if you want to tell them anywhere, send them to Northern California. <laughs> I was dying. This lady was cracking me up. She's like, we like some of the tours, but we don't want everybody moving here from, from all these other states. So don't tell anybody about it. Dude, I was like, that's, yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> that, that's a real, um, it's a real thing. It's a real trend right now from people yeah. moving off the coast and headed back to the Midwest. Cost of yeah. living is cheaper here. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, she was adamant about it too. She, I mean, <laughs> she told me, she probably told me four or five times, don't tell anybody where this is at. I was like, I'm not going to tell them where it's at. Du Bois. <laughs> <laughs> Google, just, uh, Google Maps already knows. Like, <laughs> I know, right? I mean, hell, my iPhone knows where I've been. Exactly. You're <laughs> so, trying to hide it. Like, yeah, it's, it's over. Somebody, somebody out there knows. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, a beautiful place, beautiful country. So I've seen, I've been very fortunate to be able to pull this trailer for Opus and, and uh, I'll be at the Salt Lake Adventure Expo in two weeks or a week and a half now. Then after that, I pull it home. We'll do the photo shoot. Then it goes to Loveland. I'll take it to Loveland to that show. Then uh, Flagstaff to the show. I'll do East Expo East. All, 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 all behind the Duramax, right? All behind the door. Yeah, I've already put 20,000 miles on it. Um, I've only had it like seven or eight months, maybe. Something and like that. Is it a ZR2 with a Duramax? Or yeah. Is it just, okay. yeah, it's ZR2. And and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to pull this this trailer for quite a while. So, just wish I had air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> so, plump boy here, he sweats a little bit too much. <laughs> How is it that Opus didn't give you a marketing trailer with air conditioning? I don't know. I got to talk to Chelsea about this because she's like, hey, we got this trailer and, and it matches your truck and it's got every option on it. And I'm like, sweet. Although I'm not, I personally am not a fan of these trailer movers because I think there's something I, me personally will tear off. But for those people who have to park their Opus in a garage or something because they live in an HOA or something, these things are just, they're a godsend. Right. for that but it's for me I would I, yeah yeah i would just rip them off so i mean i've had to be real careful but i got it and i look first thing i did is walk around no louvers i'm like no air conditioning son of a gun <laughs> every option though every option yeah <laughs> we love chelsea anyway sorry sorry chelsea per yeah. person i haven't actually met <laughs> no she's funny as hell created emails with <laughs> yeah she's a good gal well, sweet, man. Uh, I'm going to kind of wrap it up. Oh, right. the the one tip that I've been sharing with others, mm -hmm. the one piece of advice that I, I probably will never forget. I asked somebody about like first time to Baja, like what's your, what's your tip? He's like, never eat tacos from a stand with wheels. <laughs> <laughs> like, Especially you know, in... if you get sick, <sighs> there's no one to go back to the next day. Nope. Uh-uh. <laughs> Don't drink the water. Don't eat the tacos from a stand with wheels. Right. That's pretty solid advice. If it's a building, full go. Yeah. It's got, unless you the building's got, got wheels. Yeah. Oh <laughs> I guess that's possible. Anything's yeah. possible. That's Mexico. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So anyway, you can rate and review the show on iTunes. You can like, subscribe on YouTube as well. It it's We pick up subscribers every now and then. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, you can follow so Lee. many things. Yeah, exactly. Follow Lee on social. It's at Overland Radio on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter and Facebook. I don't do Twitter. Screw okay. that twit Twitter guy. I'm about ready to tell Mark Zuckerberg the same thing. But anyway, yeah, yeah it's you got, just you got to pay to play. I don't want to pay. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, just Facebook and Instagram really, okay. and then uh, we do YouTube. We have a YouTube. It's all Overland Radio. Yep, and then we'd, lo uh, we'd love to see you there. At Copus, Opus Campers USA. Uh, yes, or either at Opus Camper. Yeah, their website's opuscamper.us. So yeah, Opus Camper yeah. USA is their Instagram. Yeah. Because then there's also the Australian setup. Dad, <laughs> those idiots drive on the wrong side of the damn road. Don't worry about them. <laughs> I'm just teasing. One of my favorite Australians runs the Earth Cruiser. So. Uh, Lance. Lance, yes, Lance we had him the on the show. I love Lance. Lance. Is, Lance is actually coming on our show soon. Is he good? He's like, yeah. Ask him about. Well, I'm sure he'll tell you. the 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 story in the Sahara is one of the most amazing overland stories that I've ever heard. Oh wow! Okay, I have to be sure to ask. I'm not that. giving yeah. it. I'm not, I'm not giving anything. No, else. Yeah, don't tell. Don't don't say anymore. No, no. You can go back and listen yeah. to my show if you want because he told yeah. it there. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to spoil it now damn it yeah oh, yeah no i just emailed him just a week or two ago and so and uh, he's a delightful yeah. human like he's oh he's funny as hell too man he's got a great personality yeah just great personality uh okay so follow hooniverse the, the hooniverse on twitter the real hooniverse on instagram 
You can read our writing at either Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Car Bibles, The Drive. Uh, I think that's all of them. That escalates really quickly. For two dudes that just do this on the side, Ross and I have gotten busier. <laughs> Damn, you uh, left out one of the most important ones. Which one? Por Pornhub. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you on there too? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm uh, kidding. This this good okay. Catholic boy is not. <laughs> uh, oh, Catholic. Oh, boy, that changes everything. And how do you think I got the four I'm kids? <laughs> I'm Baptist. What does that tell you? <laughs> that you guys are... When so I think based that on we'll the drink we'll yeah, drink say, after church. The 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 upbringing I had was when we go bad and you guys go bad, you guys go farther. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah yeah. I'm with you, totally <laughs> exactly. Uh, Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll wrap up the show with Ross is at no not like the one from Friends on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad on Twitter and Instagram, and that's it. That's the show. We've done it. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. <laughs>